just like a plastic toy. Skateboard. <laughs> what have you got? Carry her, please. <laughs> My name is J. Morgan Pewitt. I guess you could call me an artist, because sometimes I'm an installation artist, sometimes I'm a sculptress, sometimes I'm uh, a gardener. I'd rather call myself an ambassador of entanglement. Calling myself an ambassador of entanglement affords me to have an expanded understanding and act as a steward for the entire site we call Mildred's Lane. Right now, we're at Mildred's Lane, which is an artist project in the deep woods of northeastern Pennsylvania, about 100 miles northwest of New York City. We're nestled in the woods and about a half a mile from any dirt road. There are a smattering of 19th century outbuildings, artist projects. Many of our friends are working on these long-term projects. We're, we're kind of building an art, an art site, an art park. It's not a commune, it's not an artist colony. I can't even say it's a retreat because we're working. It's something else that we're doing here. It's about critically engaging with every aspect of life. So again, you're, you're responding just instantly and intuitively to the way that things are going. You just go in and it's, a, it's great, it's just kind of a, a practice. It's a whole little hoosh within a hoosh. To so here at Mildred's time. Lane, we're interested in the emergent process that makes room for great collaboration, making something new happen. All right. The whole process yeah. of being is the artful part of it. I love all the flaws and the stains. French peasant sack here. It's a rigorous rethinking of the everyday and about every aspect of life being an artful experience. So here at Mildred's Lane, being is the practice. I grew up as an oil painter. My mother was a painter, my father was a writer. I come from a long line of beekeepers, four generations of beekeepers. I uh, grew up in the turbulent 60s in South Georgia. From Georgia, I went to School of the Art Institute of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois, in painting and sculpture, and then I got my graduate degree in experimental filmmaking. But right after that, strangely, I jumped in and, and accidentally got involved with the international fashion world. Opened a series of stores in Manhattan. I was working with my friends. I was doing pretty much everything I do now, but in the context of the fashion world. I was looking around for a place to really dig in. So I bought this with uh, three other friends and I got pregnant, I became a mother, you know, my my, I found myself as a single parent, really. In my motherhood, it was when I really realized how important it was to bring my practice into the domestic sphere. That's the feminist-driven subject here, as it's centered around domesticity, the home, as a site of change. The one rule, if there is such a thing, it has to be part of the living landscape. Someone has to be able to sleep there. We need to put people up. Everything here at Mildred's Lane 
is not static, it's a living system so that you can actually live in the installations. That's really important. So y'all can all sort of climb up here and peek into the Bee Museum. The Grafter Shack is one of the projects that's really special to me because it's about my family. It's kind of an homage to my family of queen breeders. The Grafter Shack is about my childhood visitations to my father's grafting practice. So it's a, it's a museum about the art of queen bee grafting. It's kind of the ideal writer's shack. Well, we're in the winter now, and there's not many people here. But Mildred's Lane is a school in the summertime where we can actually work on large-scale projects with our students in a collaborative way. And we have these topical sessions that all of our friends come around and from all over the world, and we convene around an idea or a project. We might be all swarming around a building that needs to be worked on, or it could be conceptual, it could be labor-based. But it, it's a school where we practice the philosophy of work styles, which is something embedded in this process here. Because as artists, work is our life. We have to weave our lifestyle through it. So it's been very important for an aspect of this project as a school to sort of transcend the institution, to co-evolve into a new landscape to kind of invent a new place where we could have these conversations openly, you know, around the fire, around a bonfire, or on the dance floor, or around a fabulous dinner table. You know, you gotta remember how important the conversation is in the development of creative minds. And, you know, a dinner table, exquisite food, good wine, is, is some of where the world's best ideas are born. inch by inch, you know? I know. What do you think of these? Because so, they all kind of go, but they're yellowy. I like yellowy because yeah. it'll offset the... Yeah. So really, it's a social and political engagement here that embodies systems of labor. How we are, how we work together. Our behaviors uh, it involves our relationship, importantly, most importantly, to the environment. It also embodies a new language, reassembling the terms and using terms like ambassador of entanglement. But most importantly, it's about creative domesticating in the everyday. And all of that balls up and sums up what I call an ethics of comportment how we behave on this planet. Being is the practice, and that, my friend, is social. It is political. Thank you.